Hey everybody, welcome back to the Fly Miata Garage. In today's video, we're going to be doing a thermostat replacement. This particular video covers the installation of a stock thermostat on a 95 Miata. The installation will have subtle differences between the generations, but is overall the same on all NAs and NBs. Now let's go over the tool lists. For tools, we have a couple drivers, ratchet, little screw gun here. Couple sockets, we have an eight millimeter, 10 millimeter, and 12 millimeter. We have some pliers for the idle air control valve bypass hose. To remove the old gasket, we have a scraper blade and a little bit of red Scotch-Brite pad if needed. For the new gasket, I like to use Forms a gasket. It's an adhesion promoter for gaskets just to make sure you don't have any leaks. And to tighten our fasteners, we have a torque wrench. We also will need a bucket for catching our coolant. So we're gonna drain a little bit to make as little mess as possible. And again, to make as little mess as possible, we will use our spill-free funnel when it comes time to fill. Now to get started, we have the car elevated and we're going to remove the splash pan. Now you might think, well, if I have a stock radiator, I don't need to remove the splash pan but you're still gonna make a mess when you open that water neck. So let's get this out of the way so we can get the mess to the ground. And so let's get this off. You might also notice this car's got some other work going on. So uh, just ignore the fact that some components are missing. So like I said, first things first, let's remove the splash pan using a 10 millimeter socket. Now in draining the cooling system, we don't need to drain it entirely. We just need to drain it until the coolant level's below that water neck so it doesn't continue to make a mess once we open it. So that should just be a couple of quarts. Now this car is equipped with the current Fly Me Outta Crossflow radiator and its drain is on the passenger side end tank here at the bottom. So we're going to get a bucket ready and open this little butterfly. Valve, a couple little turns. Once you get it far enough, there is a slot for coolant to start coming out of. Oop. Okay. Now we're back up top, and to help our cooling system drain a little bit faster, I'm going to open the radiator cap. All right, now that the system's drained sufficiently, I'm gonna reinstall my radiator cap and shut the drain valve. All right, our next step in this process is to remove the stock crossover tube for the air intake. So we need to remove these clamps, which is an eight millimeter socket. Get some pliers to remove the idle air control supply. Pull off that hose, this hose. Unclip our cruise control vacuum line. And now we can pull off our crossover tube. All right, now we are at a point where we can go ahead and open the thermostat housing and remove the old thermostat. For that, we're gonna need a 12 millimeter socket. I did move my drain bucket over to be underneath this because we will expect some coolant to spill out. Bottom is a nut, the top is a bolt. And now that our hardware is removed, we can break that bond of the gasket. 
and we can remove our thermostat. So if you're lucky, your thermostat gasket will come off in one piece. But typically, this is what happens. Scraper blade to help. Now we just need to finish removing our gasket and then just making sure our surface is nice and clean for our new gasket. All right, so now we'll just get this all cleaned up. ready for our new thermostat. Now before we install the thermostat, I'm going to treat the gasket. Now one side of the gasket already has an adhesive backing. I'm not gonna put any goop on that side, but I will on this surface here. I'm also gonna punch out these little bolt holes since those aren't needed. backing off. We'll go over to the car. So now you can tell the thermostat's offset a little bit and it has all this little uh, jingle valve. I'm gonna locate that pointing up. And there's a little machined groove on the water neck. That's what the thermostat fits into. And then we'll slip our gasket into place. Make sure you're holding your thermostat the whole time because if it pops down, you can actually crack your thermostat housing if you tighten it down. Okay, now we're ready to put our cap back on. Now our fasteners are going to torque down to between 14 and 19 pound feet. All right, now we're ready to reinstall our crossover tube. Get our IAC tube and our valve cover breather tube. Now I'm going to fill the system and I'm going to use our spill-free funnel, available on the Fly Me Auto website. Now we'll fill our coolant.
All right, so we've poured our coolant back in, and if it all goes down, then we should be good to go. If there's a lot left in there that just won't go in, that probably means we have a big air bubble trapped in our system. At that point, you'd wanna nose up the car, you know, be sure to check your wheels, elevate the front until that air is able to purge out, or go take it for a short drive to help that air purge. Once our cooling system is full, and before we install our under tray, we do wanna go for a drive and then do a leak check. We wanna do a leak check on a hot car because a hot car will have a pressurized cooling system. Once that leak check is done, we verified no leaks, then we will go ahead and put the under tray back on. All right, now we've gotten our car up to temperature and now I'm gonna check for leaks. Completely dry. So now we're ready to install our under tray. All right, that concludes the installation of a new thermostat on our 95 Miata. If you have any questions during your install, go ahead and reach out to us via phone or email. We'd be happy to help you out. If you have more ideas for videos like this, go ahead and drop them in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more content like this in the future. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.